الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد we praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى the exalted and might the majestic and we ask Allah to exalt the mention to grant peace and to send his blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his companions, upon his wives, and all those who follow them on their path of righteousness until the day of recompense. Wa alaykum as salam. What are the qualities that the ummah is lacking in order to regain its strength and return to the state of honor which it once held among the nations? What were the factors that made the Sahaba the successful people they were? And on their hands the whole world was opened. And so they ruled the world. You know, you know that much. What were the main qualities? What were the factors? What did they have that gave them that strength? That ability, even though originally and beforehand they had been some Bedouins, desert Bedouins, uncivilized, no real education in some sense. I mean, the, those who were illiterate were many. Then they were able to become the leaders, the Sahaba and the gener generations which followed. They became the educators of the world. What did they have? They had four qualities, four factors. Number one, unity of aqidah. The aqidah was one. There was no maturidi, ash'ari, mu'tazili, and the list goes on. It was ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. It was the aqidah of ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. Now we had to call it the aqidah of ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. Back then it didn't need a name. It was agreed upon. So much so that the slave girl who was out in the farm with the sheep who had no real knowledge, didn't go to Medina University or Umul Qura or anywhere else, when she was asked the basic question, where is Allah? She pointed up in the direction of above and said, Fis Sama, Allah is above. The slave girl knew what was up. Don't ask about the close Sahaba. The, the knowledgeable Sahaba, the senior scholars among the Sahaba, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Umar, Mu'adh, radiallahu anhu. The Aqidah was one. Today's the Aqidah is many. Many, many, many. Everybody comes up with his own. Just like in Christianity. Huh? What happened in Christianity? Every day a priest feels a particular way about a particular aspect of Christianity, he will make his own church. He will branch, take a branch off that main church and he will come up with his own church with his own ideology and he will have his own followers and khalas. Because they disagreed on some matter. The second quality was adherence to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. That was not something that they took lightly like we take it lightly. The sunnah was, was what? What was the sunnah? The sunnah was the deed. The sunnah wasn't something that the people just add now after they mention the Qur'an, they say, and the sunnah. The sunnah and the Qur'an were one and the same. The lifestyle of the Prophet ﷺ was of value. His actions, his behavior, his acknowledgments, his statements were taken very seriously. If you go back, if you just read a glimpse, a glimpse of some of the issues that happened between the Sahaba, when did they differ? They differed when one would go against the sunnah. Right? There's a hadith which you can find in Riyadh al-Salihin. That a man had gotten some pebbles. And he would flick them off. Huh? And the sahabi told him, don't do this. Because the Prophet ﷺ said that this doesn't benefit. You can't hunt with it. And you may poke someone's eye. Walaikum salam. He did it again. He told him, I will never speak to you again. I tell you, the Messenger of Allah said, don't do it. And you keep doing it. 
If we were to apply this today to ourselves, no one will speak to no one. You'd be talking to yourself. How many aspects of the sunnah do we leave alone? The son of Ibn Umar, who said that I will have the woman, I will not have the woman go to the masjid. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تمنعوا إماء الله مساجد الله. Don't prevent the woman from going to the masjid. He said, I will prevent them. Because of the fitna, he had a reason. He had a reason. He saw that the people, the women weren't adhering to the dress code as, as well as they did at the time of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. And the same thing happened. He said, I tell you, the Messenger of Allah said, don't, don't you know, prevent them. And you say you will prevent them? And that was the end of it between the two. The third characteristic is abandonment of innovations. There was no room for bid'ah. No bid'ah was taken lightly either. Just as much as they loved the sunnah, they hated bid'ah. Any introduction, any minor introduction, anything that someone introduced, invented into this deen, into this deen, it was rejected by the majority, by the whole sahaba. I mean by the majority as in the one who may have made a mistake. Like you have the khawarij. That was a bid'ah. The bid'ah of the khawarij. Or anyone's the qadariya. Which actually happened at the time of Umar. Ibn Umar, عفوان, عنه, And he said, tell them that there's nothing between me and them until they believe in Qadr. So some bid'ah appeared early on. They were not entertained. They were not entertained. Today, it seems that there's a lot of laxity. You know, people, there's no problem. Is this a bid'ah? Now they got the nerve to call it bid'ah hasana. Yani how are you going to fix a problem? The only way you can fix a problem is give it a good title. Huh? Like you buy a lousy pair of shoes and you put a, you know, Adidas on them. That makes them good now. And they do this by the way. Fake shoes, this is what fake shoes are. That's why you find the original for 300 riyals and the fake one for 20 riyals. And both of them say Adidas because one of them is only using the name hoping to sell their product. So they have bid'ah hasana and then, you know, this is the deen is ease and the deen is whatever and you guys are making life difficult. Wahhabis, everything is bid'ah, bid'ah, shirk, shirk, bid'ah, bid'ah, shirk, shirk. Yes, yes. As long as you commit shirk and bid'ah, we're going to tell you this is shirk and bid'ah. What do you think? We have a grocery store here? You think it's, the deen is like you like, you customize it, we're just going to sit there and watch? Well, like, congratulations, brother. La habibi. The limits are there. No bid'ah in Islam. Zero. Not even one, not even the smallest thing was entertained among the Sahaba and those who followed them. Very careful about bid'ah. If Ibn Mas'ud walked in upon people, what were they doing? They were remembering Allah. They were remembering Allah in a fashion which wasn't known at the time of the Prophet wasallam. They would grab some pebbles. Again, pebbles seem to be a very common feature for those who want to go astray. And he would say, Sabbihu mi'a. Huh? Do tasbih a hundred times and they will throw the pebbles counting. Does it remind you of the sabha? The beads from the Christians. The Catholics use it. They know they have a cross hanging at the bottom. Sabihu miya. So they say, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Ibn Mas'ud walked in on him and said, What are you doing? Either you are, listen to this now, listen to the fiqh. He said, Either, either. You are upon a guidance better than the Prophet wasallam, or you are opening a door of fitna. And which one was it? The second. They turned out to be the Khawarij, who fought against the Sahaba and killed Allah knows how many. They were remembering Allah. Three qualities so far. Aqeedah was sound and unanimous. Loving the Sunnah and adhering to it. Hating innovations. Fourthly, fourthly, brotherhood, all in one. They were all in one, even though they differed, even though there were issues, even though the fitna also engulfed the, the Sahaba and the very early generations, yet, yet all of them were like one. Because they all wanted the truth. Their objective was the truth. And if your objective is the truth, and there's no room for desires and whims, 
Even if you differ with your brother, like the scholars differ, there's no harm. At the end of the day, he is your brother before Allah. You may differ with him on a scholarly issue, on an issue based on knowledge, no problem. In fact, you can refute each other and write books in refutation, no problem. But their hearts were sound. Because they all seek Allah's pleasure. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they had that brotherhood. Now by Allah's grace, I, I have delivered, I guess, uh, lectures on the first three topics. Aqidah, do you really know him? Right? We spoke about the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the saved and aided sect, Allah calls in Jibreel, you can enumerate, you can think about the lectures that dealt with the issue of Aqidah. In terms of the uh, uh, adhering to the Sunnah, the lectures strictly following the Sunnah versus the religion is easy. And other lectures out there that deal with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Innovation, the lecture, the extermination of innovation. And the saved and hated sect, these dealt with the issues of innovators and how to deal with them. The one which we have not yet discussed, haven't had the privilege to do so, is the one which we are doing tonight inshallah ta'ala. And that's why we'll be discussing all in one. The brotherhood in Islam. In times when our attention has been diverted away from the fundamentals. And somehow some Muslims have become experts in wasting each other's time. Amazing. How much time is wasted on nothing? If the time that is exerted in the people of Sunnah, that the time they spend in refuting each other, if they used it to give da'wah to the deviant, we would have accomplished a lot. But that time is being wasted elsewhere. So it's time that we give it some time to re-establish the principles of brotherhood in Islam and their implications. What does it imply? Now whenever we want to discuss an issue, any issue in Islam, we have to see if you really want to know the importance of something, just evaluate what Allah says about it. Fair enough? Whatever Allah says about something, if Allah revealed Qur'an, يعني, you know the process of revelation is not an easy one. Sahih? Would not Allah Azza wa Jal speak the revelation to Jibreel? And Jibreel will bring the revelation from Allah knows how, you know how far the distance is. Huh? Then it will come down and it will be heavy upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sometimes he will be sweating on a day, on a very cold night. Because of the weight of the revelation, قَوْلًا ثَقِيلًا A very heavy statement. All of this process for sometimes an ayah to be revealed. An ayah to be revealed. So if it came from Allah, pay attention. So if we want to know what is the significance of brotherhood in Islam, let us see what Allah said about it. And then we'll be able to know the, its importance. Allah said in the Quran, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Verily the believers are but a single brotherhood. The believers are but a single brotherhood. So reconcile between your brothers. And fear Allah. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Perhaps you will attain mercy. So the attainment of mercy was made conditional to the re reconciliation between the brothers. And between identifying and internalizing the, the fact that the believers are a single brotherhood. Of course the scholars explain that there are two kinds of brotherhood. Huh? Al-ukhuwa al-khasa wal-ukhuwa al-amma. The general brotherhood and the specific brotherhood. The general one applies to all the believers in the world. Any Muslim on earth is a brother of yours and has particular rights. And there's a level of love there. There's a level of love. It has to be there because believer. However, the specific one has to do with the level of piety in that person, which we will see in the next ayah, inshallah. So there's a special, there's a general bond among the Muslims of brotherhood and there's a specific one that is specific to believers with spe specific qualities. So, that's why you will find that you may get along or you may uh, really love a brother more than another. 
Provided that you're loving them because of their iman. The next ayah explains it. Allah says, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ وَيُطِيعُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ أُولَئِكَ سَيَرْحَمُهُمُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Listen to this ayah. The believing men and the believing women are allies to one another. They're protectors of one another. What is their quality? Or what are their qualities? They enjoin what is good. They forbid what is evil. They establish the salah. They pay the zakah. And they obey Allah and His Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then look at the ayah. أُولَٰئِكَ سَيَرْحَمُهُمُ اللَّهِ It is those whom Allah shall show His special mercy to. The special mercy of Allah, because there's a general mercy which encompasses all creatures, and there's a specific one for the believers. Those individuals will have a special mercy from Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Verily Allah is full of might and wise. Now notice the both ayat. Both ayat, Allah made mercy conditional to brotherhood. If you really want to get the mercy of Allah, where is our brotherhood? It's not a coincidence that this is the case. So now whoever has this, the more you enjoin the good, forbid the evil, establish Allah, pay the zakah, obey Allah's messenger, the stronger the bond of brotherhood, the stronger it should be. And the weaker, the weaker. That's why, the disobedient Muslims, and we're all disobedient, but I'm saying those who, their lifestyle is disobedience. Right? It's not like we all fall into sin, no doubt. And if you are an exception to the rule, raise your hand. I thought so. But we're talking about someone who's away from Allah wa ta'ala, totally indulged in, in sin and, and negligence and heedlessness and what have you. You find that there's a huge gap between a practicing Muslim and that person. This is the... Discomfort. There's no compatibility, there's no harmony. It feels like you almost feel, you know, uneasy just being around such an individual because of that huge gap. Whereas when you find someone who is like practicing like you are practicing, you find that there's a natural bond that doesn't require any preparation. It's just there by default. It's because of that. So those who are involved in bid'ah and sin, well, they wonder, you say, brother, you're speaking about brotherhood. Well, we don't see any of your brotherhood. All you do is talk about us and mention our name and blah, 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 you know. Say, Akhi, I'm sorry, man. Wallahi, if you were to return to the truth, like, ya Sheikh, we will kiss your head and put you right here next to me. In fact, I will go away. You talk. You talk. But come back. Oh, you want to go over there and deviate the Muslims. And you want us to sit there and say, Wallah, brother, Habibi, brother. Wallah, I love you very much. No, Habibi. You deprive yourself of these privileges when you go against the Sunnah. Had you been against the Sunnah and at home sleeping, we would come and visit you. But the problem is you're against the Sunnah and you're on TV and you're on the YouTube and you are in the Muslim world speaking. La. La. There are limits, Habibi. There are limits for your deviance and the influence you have on the Muslims. That we take very seriously. Now that becomes because of that brotherhood, because of that love for the brothers, we have to speak out. Be careful because now you're not dealing with one person, you're dealing with the masses. The masses of Muslims may deviate from the path. Sorry. That is more important to us than your honor. Even though we respect your honor, but that is more important than your honor. That's why you've spoken against. Anyone whom I have mentioned or anyone else mentions, the only problem is that you're not on the path. There's not much we can do about that until you decide to return. And don't say that you don't know because Allah made the truth very clear. The truth is very clear. In fact, when Allah mentioned the truth, He said that He just flings it against falsehood and falsehood just goes away and it cannot even come back. فَإِذَا هُوَ زَاهِقَ The falsehood will disappear. Just people love their opinions so much. So much. 
Even though they know they're going against the general, you know, uh, understanding of the righteous predecessors, still their opinion is so, yani, magnified in their own eyes, that no matter what you say, it's not gonna be accepted. And they say, well, everybody accepts it. No, not everybody accepts it. All the ignorant people who don't know any better accept it. And all those who are educated and knowledgeable don't. So, you know, check yourself, akhi. Barakallah feek. Bye. Now, what does it entail? Or the bounties of Allah? Brotherhood, brotherhood is from the bounties of Allah. Listen to these ayat. وَاَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا Do not deviate, do not divide. Hold on to the rope of Allah, all of you all together. اعتصموا بحبل الله اعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا. Had Allah Azza wa Jal only said, hold on to the rope of Allah, that would have been sufficient. But He said afterwards, and do not divide, do not differ. Even though when you hold on to the rope of Allah, you cannot possibly divide because you're all holding on to it together. Emphasis. وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Listen to this now. إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَى حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِّنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ سورة آل عمران آية 54 I believe. Earlier I was supposed to quote the ayah. People always say, you know, send an email, please quote the ayah, it makes it easier. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنَانَ أُخْوَىٰ إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ أُخْوَىٰ سورة الحجرات آية 15 The one after الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ سورة التوبة آية 71 And this is Al Imran, I believe it's 53 or 63. عَلَى كُلِّ حَالٍ Listen to the translation though. Hold on to the rope of Allah altogether and do not divide. And remember the favor of Allah upon you, إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً When you were enemies. You were enemies. Right? The, uh, the, the, the tribes among Quraysh and in Medina, all these people had beef as they say. They had problems with each other, serious problems. Sometimes the war would be on for years over a poet dissing a, a tribe. One, one, one verse of poetry was enough to cause war for years. You were a'da. فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ So Allah Azza wa Jal created a form of love and, and reconciliation and harmony between your hearts. فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا So you became, because of the bounty of Allah upon you, brothers. And you were on the brick of a fire, of a pit of a fire. So He saved you from it. Such Allah makes His ayat clear to you, perhaps you will be guided. The ulama say this is a very interesting ayah in the book of Allah. Why? Think about it this way. You were astray. You were astray going to Jahannam. You were a kafir. Then Allah guided you. After Allah guided you, two things happened. Now you're given the privilege of being protected from the fire, no guarantee. Sahih. You're on the path. And you have brothers. Which one is more important according to our understanding? Which one is more important? Being protected from the fire or having brothers? Being protected from the fire. فَمَنْ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ خَلَاص If you've been moved away from the fire, I mean, let's just worst case scenario. If you had no friends, no brothers in this whole world, you lived on an island by yourself, and you were protected from Jahannam, are you going to complain? No. In fact, some of say, that sounds good. Now just give me a spear gun, I'm ready to go. You wouldn't mind, say that's all good, as long as I don't go to Jahannam. But if someone said, have a lot of brothers, and enjoy their company, and eat with each other, and spend time with each other, but go to Jahannam at the end, say thank you very much. Yet, with this understanding of ours, Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned first the favor of, of making them brothers, and then He said, you were on the verge of a brick of a fire, He saved you from it. So Allah mentioned the virtue, the blessing, the bounty of brotherhood before the one where He saved them from the fire, just to denote the importance of brotherhood in Islam. Subhanallah al-Azim. Now, 
Besides the fact it's a bounty from Allah, it means to acquire Allah's love. In a hadith in Sahih Muslim, a man set out to visit a brother of his in another town. And as soon as he took off, Allah Azza wa Jal sent an angel. And this angel met him on the way. He stopped him. Said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to visit a brother of mine. He said, is there some, some business that is unfinished? Is there anything you're trying to, to rectify? Anything that is issue? He said, no, not really. Except that I love him for the sake of Allah. I have no other, I'm traveling. He's traveling from one town to another just to visit the brother. The angel told him, I am the messenger of Allah to you. Not the messenger of Allah, yani the messenger from Allah. Because the malaika are rusul. I am the messenger of Allah unto you to tell you that Allah has loved you because of that love you have for that brother. Allahu Akbar. That's it. Didn't buy him a house. Didn't give him a car. Didn't do anything. He's just visiting him. Just a visit. In fact, when you visit someone, do you benefit? Or, or do you lose? You benefit. Juice, coffee, cake. Um, it's a win-win situation. That's why many people when they're hungry, they visit their friends. That's the only time. Ah, I wonder why you're here. You didn't have lunch. How did you know? Everybody knows. You only visit when you're hungry. So you're the winner. You see? And yet, he just all he did was visit him for the sake of Allah. He acquired Allah's love with this very simple act of worship. Uh, Abu Idris al-Khawlani said, and the hadith in the Muslim Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, he said, I entered the masjid in Dimashq. And I saw that there was a man whose face was glowing, a young man, and all these people around him, making a big deal. And anything he would say, they would carry out. They would ask him questions, he would give him the answer, they would act upon it instantly. So he said to them, who is this? They said, this is Mu'adh ibn Jabal. This is Mu'adh ibn Jabal. So he decided that he wanted to meet him. He figured he will come early. Huh? Tahjir. He will come early. Talk about those who, Allah Musta'an. He will come early to the masjid to meet him. Thinking he would be there, the first person to be there. He went to the masjid, he saw that Mu'adh had already beat him to the masjid. For Salat al-Fajr. He had beaten him to the masjid. He was there before him and he was praying his sunnah. So I, he said, I waited for him until he concluded his salah. Then I came and said to him, Wallahi, ya Mu'adh, I love you for the sake of Allah. He said, Alillahi. He said, is it for Allah? He said, naam. He told him a second time, Alillahi, is it really for the sake of Allah? He told him, naam. He told him a third time, Alillahi, is it for the sake of Allah? He told him a third time, naam. He grabbed him by his garment. He said, I give you the glad tidings of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Allah says in the hadith Qudsi, قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَجَبَتْ مَحَبَّتِي وَجَبَتْ مَحَبَّتِي لِلْمُتَحَابِّينَ فِيَّ وَالْمُتَجَالِسِينَ فِيَّ وَالْمُتَزَاوِرِينَ فِيَّ وَالْمُتَبَاذِلِينَ فِيَّ Allah Azza wa Jal says, My love is guaranteed, is obligatory to those who love each other for my sake and to those who sit with each other for my sake. The jalsa, we ask Allah to make this among them. The jalsa, for the sake of Allah. And the tazawar, the visitation, for the sake of Allah. And the tabadhul, those who spend and they sacrifice from what they have, fi sabilillah. For the sake of Allah, for the brotherhood, Allah guaranteed that they shall be loved by Him. See what we're losing? We're losing Allah. They will be under the shade of Allah. Do you have two narrations? One, the, in Sahih Muslim, the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anha, in, radiallahu anhu, inna Allah yaqulu yawm al-qiyama ayna al-mutahabbun bi jalali al-yawma udhilluhum fi dhilli yawm la dhilla illa dhilli Allah will ask on yawm al-qiyama, where are those who had loved each other for my glory? And then Allah will say, today I shall grant them the shade, the shade of the throne of Allah on the day where there's no shade except my shade. 
And another hadith which you know in Bukhari, seven will be under the seer of Allah, and one of them is, رَجُلَانِ تَحَبَّا فِي اللَّهِ اِجْتَمَعَ عَلَيْهِ وَتَفَرَّقَ عَلَيْهِ Two men, or it applies to women, not men and women, not a man and a woman, two men or two women who love each other for my sake, so they meet up in this condition and they depart in that condition. So the sole purpose is love for the sake of Allah. Excuse me, sir. Thank you. In order to attain the perfection and sweetness of Iman, the hadith which is Sahih and Tirmidhi says, Man a'ta lillahi wa mana'a lillahi wa ahabba lillahi wa abghada lillahi wa ankaha lillahi faqad istakmala imanahu. The one who gives for the sake of Allah and he, pre- and he prevents or he withholds for the sake of Allah. He loves for the sake of Allah. His love is only for the sake of Allah. He doesn't love, the, uh, love any Tom, Dick and Harry. He doesn't love cricket players, football players, basketball players, artists, singers, soap opera actors, none of these. Because these are not the friends of Allah. The other way around in fact. If you find a righteous one among them, congratulations. Congratulations, we will throw a party for him. But you won't find that many of them, huh? Usually they are on some other stuff. Ala kulli hal, you love only for Allah and you hate for Allah as well. You hate those whom Allah hates and you hate, you hate the things which Allah hates. And he ankaha, yani when you give in marriage, you do it for the sake of Allah. Then and only then he has, he has perfected his iman. He has actually gathered the elements which provide perfection of iman. In the other hadith it says, ثَلَاثٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ وَجَدَ بِهِنَّ حَلَوَةُ الْإِيمَانِ أَنْ يَكُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا سِوَاهُمَا وَأَنْ يُحِبَّ الْمَرْأَ لَا يُحِبُّهُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ وَأَنْ يَكْرَهَ أَنْ يَعُودَ فِي الْكُفْرِ كَمَا يَكْرَهَ أَنْ يُقْذَفَ فِي النَّارِ وَالْحَدِيثُ مُتَّفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ It's in Bukhari and Muslim. Three qualities, whosoever has them shall taste the sweetness of Iman. Which for many either doesn't exist or has become bitter. Because of our sins. Huh? Because of our sins, we don't taste the sweetness of Iman. We, just, we don't taste anything. If not, tasting bitter, bitter taste, rather than the sweet. Iman is sweet. Yani, sometimes you're just reclining like this, and you know that, Alhamdulillah, you're a Muslim, and you're trying your best to be a good Muslim with your shortcomings, but you realize why you were created. You believe in Jannah with certainty. You believe in Jahannam with certainty. You believe the angels are writing down. All these things, when they come to mind, they give you really a peace of mind. Rather than someone who's lost and confused, they don't know where they're going. You see? This is sweet. That's why, this, you know, the Salaf used to say, if the, if the Umara, if the princes, they knew what we had, they would fight with us with the swords. Trying to take the, the happiness which we enjoy as believers. As believers. Sweetness, it's sweet. But you will, if you have these three qualities, then and only then we will taste the sweetness of Iman. What are they? Number one, that Allah and His Messenger are more beloved to you than everyone else. Is that so? Probably no. Probably no. Because when the command comes, how do, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that, you know, you have a gauge of love, and it goes up to full, when you say Allah and His Messenger, and it's only halfway when it comes to your parents, and it's a quarter when it comes to your friends, and it's zero when it comes to your boss. Huh? No, no, that's not what it means. There's no gauge for you to be able to measure that kind of love. It's impossible. What it means is obedience. Who do you obey? When your parents tell you to disobey Allah, and you listen to them, and you ignore Allah and His Messenger, you love them more than you love Allah and His Messenger. We fail the test. If your boss tells you that, we fail the test. Anything now which conflicts with the commandments of Allah and His Messenger. Once we favor them, then we have loved them more than Allah and His Messenger. And the same applies for parents with their children. Huh? What the children want. They know it's haram. But yani, he's a child and this and that. Yeah. Meaning you want to make him more happy than what would be make Allah happy. Subhanallah al-Azim. Yeah, any major misconceptions. But they're very common and prevalent. The second quality 
is that you love a brother and you love him only for the sake of Allah. Which is the point, a shahid. And thirdly, that you hate to go back to the state of disbelief after Allah saved you from it, the same way you hate to be thrown into the fire. Surely, no one likes to be thrown into the fire. And once Allah saves you from deviance to guidance, you're so afraid to go back to the old ways, the same way you're afraid that someone will throw you into the fire. That means you will avoid what will take you there. You're afraid of falling into the old traps. It's a very serious game. In the third hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. None of you shall truly believe until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. And how often do we do that? In our case, none of us shall truly believe until he loves for himself what he loves for himself. That's it. Really, I'm, I'm speaking about myself at least. With my shortcomings, we really don't have that, that true love for the sake of Allah where we really love for the brother what we love for ourselves. It's always about me, me, me. And this is a disease. It's a disease which indicates that our iman is not really there. Allah understand. Does that mean we're satisfied with it? Say, oh, what big deal? Okay, next. No. We have to pause. We have to go through maintenance. We have to go through some, some fixing. We have to fix this problem. It's not something that we can take lightly. You want to enter Jannah? Do you want to enter Jannah? Well, the hadith says in Sahih Muslim, لا تدخلون الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحبوا You shall not enter paradise until you believe and you cannot believe until you love for each other. Until you love each other, I'm sorry. See the, the, the way it goes, the formula? No Jannah without Iman, no Iman without mutual love. No love, no Iman, no Iman, no Jannah. Just in case someone is wondering, what does it really mean to be brothers? How do we understand that? Now this is all general, general stuff, but let's put our finger on it. Yani what does it entail? How do I behave? What do I have to do? The Prophet ﷺ explained that. In the narrations. He said in the hadith in Bukhari, لا تجسسوا ولا تحسدوا ولا تدابروا ولا تباغضوا وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا Do not spy on one another. And I will comment later in, in, in the obstacles in the, in the way of brotherhood. And do not envy one another, and do not turn away from one another, and do not hate one another, and be slaves of Allah as a single brotherhood. Kunu ibad Allahi ikhwana. Be those slaves of Allah, brothers, be brothers to one another. In another hadith, the Prophet said, مثل المؤمنين في توادهم وتراحمهم وطعاتفهم مثل الجسد إذا اشتكى منه عضو تداعى له سائر الجسد بالسهر والحمى رواه مسلم. The similitude of the believers in regards to their love, their mercy and their compassion towards one another is like a single body. When one limb, one part, one member of the body aches, or is suffering, then the whole body is there staying up at night in fever. The whole body suffers accordingly. Yep, that's another calamity which has befallen us. We just don't feel this way. We don't feel this way. They will, they will deal with it. They'll be okay. Well, they'll be okay, we'll be okay. And everybody goes his own way. That's the mentality. إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ اللَّهِ So where are we from that? When people now, they wish for you to be destroyed. They wish for you to, they make dua that Allah destroys you, rather than wishing guidance for you. You know, if you have a few major, some minor errors, make dua for the person to be guided to the truth. But, now it's the other way around. In the hadith of Ibn Umar, which is also in Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Muslimu akhul Muslim. The brother, the Muslim is a brother to the other Muslim. He's his brother. لا يظلمه, he does not wrong him or oppress him. ولا يسلمه, he does not submit him to his enemy. He does not leave him alone and say, well, you know, do whatever you want with him. 
Man kana fi hajati akhihi kana Allah fi hajati. Whosoever is there for the need of his brother, Allah will be there for his need. You look after him, Allah will look after you. Now, you compare you're looking after someone versus Allah looking after you. Which one is more important and better and more effective? وَمَنْ فَرَّجَ عَنْ مُسْلِمٍ كُرْبَةً فَرَّجَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ بِهَا كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرَبِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Whosoever shall alleviate a, a, a calamity which befalls a believer in this dunya, Allah shall alleviate one like that on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Which one is more important? One in the dunya, one on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. One on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. You don't want to deal with any kurab on that day. You just want to be clean. You just want to go smoothly to Jannah. Put the sirat and go like a horse or like a barq as it comes in the hadith and you want it over with. You don't want to go through questioning and accountability and you did this on that day and you did that on that day because whoever nuqish al-hisab, whoever goes back and forth in his accountability, he will be destroyed. Now you want these sins to be conceived by Allah, forgiven and go straight to Jannah. So you, you alleviate a calamity today and there shall come a time when Allah will alleviate on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. وَمَنْ سَتَرَ مُسْلِمًا سَتَرَهُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And whoever conceals the fault of a Muslim, Allah will conceal his fault on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Again, again, exception to the rule is warning the Muslims against danger, against dangerous individuals. We're talking about a good Muslim. He does something wrong, don't say anything. Conceal his fault, Allah shall conceal yours on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Don't go expose him. We very often fall into that trap out of joking. We're just joking, so we wind up, you know, as they say, uh, exposing the dirty laundry. Putting it all out there. Actually, even though we fall into that, we're guilty of that because of joking, we need to also know the limitations. There are limitations to that. Sometimes, you know, when you become too close with people, kind of, you know, all these boundaries, you know, and all these barriers are broken. But really, there should remain some, otherwise we may fall into the trap. What is the right of your brother or your sister? Yeah, so sisters for the sisters and the brothers for the brothers. What are the rights we have upon each other? First, we should love each other for the sake of Allah. And that has been explained. Secondly, we should assist one another when assistance is required. You know what happened between the Ansar and the Muhajireen. يُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا They would favor their brothers over themselves even though they themselves were in need. They were altruists as they call it in English. They were altruists. Yeah, those who come to the Aqidah class should have this word memorized by now. Are we like that? You know what happened with the Abdurrahman ibn Awf and the, the Sahabi, I can't recall his name now. I mean, the guy told him, look, take half of my wealth and choose whichever one of my wives huh, that you like so I can divorce her. When her idda is over, you can marry her. Can anyone do this today? No way. No way on earth. I thought your wife. But see here, it's not that he doesn't care for his wife. It's not that he doesn't care for his wife or that the wife was like a property that he, doesn't, he wasn't concerned about. As some people may try to explain it. No. But this shows you the level, the lev, level of love and concern. Yani the extent to which he's willing to favor his brother over himself is that he's given him what he loves the most. In fact, this shows you how much he loves his wife. Otherwise, don't I'll get you married. There are many women here, Sheikh and Tao. I got you. The mahar is on me. The wedding is on me. He would have gotten married. He wouldn't tell him take my wife. But he loves his wife so much, and he loves his brother so much. He's willing to do that. And half of his wealth, Abdul Rahman Abd said, "Barakallahu laka fi malika wa ahlik." May Allah bless you and your family. Just show me the marketplace. He was a businessman. He went and made the money that he needed and more. He was among the richest of the Sahaba. Do we do this today? Huh? Some people, alhamdulillah, may Allah bless them. They, 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 they do these. I know people personally that actually do this. It may not be that he will tell you, take my wife. <laughs> and we, don't want, we, don't, we would not want that today. But they will do a lot of things fi sabilillah. Jazahumullah khairan. We should learn from them and be like them. Thirdly, you should be gentle in your speech and smile. Huh? Allah said to the Yahud, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 83. Say to the people something good. 
And he said to the believers, وَكُلِّ عِبَادِي يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ Surah Al-Isra, Ayah 53. Tell my slaves to say that which is better. So the more we are slaves of Allah, the more we will say that which is better. How often do we say that which is worse? Or the worst? Wallah al musta'an Look, I'm trying to show us how deficient we are. Yani we think we have a brotherhood, but we, we, even though we do, we're lacking a lot of stuff. And we're violating many different things, and we're missing out on a lot of things. That's how we're supposed to be according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Lowering your wing to him, and humbleness. Allah said, Muhammadun Rasulullah, وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشِدَّاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَّارِ رُحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and those who are with him, ashidahu ala al kufar, they are stern. They are stern with the disbelievers. They are merciful amongst each other. But as one of the shuyukh said, today among this this group of of extremists, huh? You know who I'm talking about. When they see the kafir, they smile. Hey, John, how are you? Would you like some coffee? And then they go to their fellow Muslim upon the Sunnah, and they deal with Allah Rasul as they say here. Huh? Then they bring the punishment, they bring the wrath, they bring the anger, they bring the... Ya Shaykh, you will say, no way man. This is a kafir man. This is your Muslim brother, chill out. Chill out. If he were upon some kufr, wal-iyadu billah, some major shirk, some innovation, you will still try to bring him. If you're, if you're there, if you're able to communicate with him, say, come, come, come. Like in the lecture, nasiha, take it or take it. Not. May Allah destroy you, and may Allah destroy your family, and may Allah destroy your YouTube channel, may Allah destroy your business. Allah yahdik. Doesn't even know, you know, this, these people that have been sending me message, man, I, I don't understand these creatures, man. I just sit there behind the screen and if my beard was longer, I would be, you know, putting my hand in it. But all I could do is grab the tip of the, the ones I have now. See, what do these people want from me? What do you want? What do you want? Yeah, say, haram, wallah, haram. Irham an nas. Ram your brother, ule. Look, I'm your brother. Tell me something. If you want me to be guided, tell me something good. What, what a threat. We will tell all about you. We're going to bring it to the shuyukh. You're going to bring it to the shuyukh about me. Why? Because I say, don't say Salafi. Huh? So they go to the sheikh, Sheikh Luhaydan. Amazing stuff. Huh? I was hoping they would say there's a da'i, Baba Musab was da'akari, he's deviant, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. They say there's a da'i in Saudi Arabia who was telling the people the word Salafi is haram. Even though if you go to my lectures, I say in the lecture, be a Salafi. But not as in a cult member. I use the word. He said it's haram. So what do you say, O Shaykh? The Shaykh went to the Arabic language because the question was posed incorrectly. He said the word Salafi ala wazin, laha wazin. Uh, fa'ali, and uh, it, it's an, a correct Arabic word, and maybe this person doesn't know Arabic. What does this have to do with anything? And in his, in his answer, he said, if he meant the speaker that Salafi is a sect, then yes, that shouldn't be the case. Subhanallah, yani they're trying to get something from him against me, and then they went back against them. Allah showed him a sign. I say, yeah, it's a sign from Allah. It's a sign from Allah that even the Shaykh, you try to twist it around. Tab, let me speak to him. Let me speak to him. He said, you want me to teach the Shaykh English? You want me to teach the Shaykh English so you can speak to him? I said, no, I speak Arabic. You learn Arabic and I can speak to the Shaykh. You put me on three-way with the Shaykh. Don't worry, I'll communicate with him. You don't even know Arabic. Instead of telling me to teach the Shaykh English, you learn Arabic and come. We work it out. All kinds of means you give them for solutions. They don't want any solutions. Why? Because you're a target now. Because you have to be destroyed now. This brotherhood, throw it in the trash. It doesn't apply. As if I'm Habib al-Jifri. But anyways, they shall see. And they will see. We know. 
We know Allah Azza wa Jal always, always will make the truth prevail. And that day shall come. I just hope out of sincere love. Wallahi, I love them for the sake of Allah because I believe in the depth of my heart that they're really trying to protect the sunnah. I have no doubt that they're really trying to protect the sunnah but they are dead wrong. So I'm upset with the way they behave, but I wish them goodness at the end of the day. I hope out of brotherly love that they will slow down and take it easy and try to work things out. It's for their good and their advantage. This is not going to bring any good for the ummah at all. Ala kulli hal. Nasiha. Your brother deserves nasiha. And go back to the lecture. Take it or take it. Of course, what is meant by that is that when you see something is wrong, don't be quiet. Part of being a brother is al-Muslimu mir'ah. Mir'at al-Muslim. Your brother should be a mirror, a mirror to you. What does the mirror do? Does it? I mean, let's just say, if your hair was standing, and it never applies to me, if your hair is standing, is the mirror going to hide it? Say, so, well, this is an excellent mirror, mashallah. Where do you buy it from, Akhi? You know, big nose, it makes it small. It fixes you up so you can look nice. Have you ever seen such a mirror? No. The mirror tells it to you as it is. If you look scary, you're going to look and say, man. You know, <laughs> I look scary now. So the mirror is pretty straightforward, doesn't really beat around the bush. And so is your brother in faith. He's supposed to tell you where the problems are. And sometimes you have to be harsh. Some people, can, you cannot pamper. They already like pampering, so the more you pamper them, the longer they take. Some people, you just have to put him in his place. Hey, stop. Out of love. Out of love. And the Prophet ﷺ did that. He, he saw a man lying down on, on his stomach and he kicked him. Yes. Yes, the sunnah has that as part of it. It's not the principle. It is not the way you deal with everybody because some people take it seriously and they go, no, no. But you can do this sometimes. You can be tough with the brothers sometimes out of love for them. And I've seen this many times and it's very effective because some people, they just want you to tell them everything is good so they can continue doing their silly stuff. Cooperation. There should be cooperation. وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Aid and help one another in birr, righteousness, and taqwa, and piety. And do not aid one another in sin and transgression. So we should work together towards rectifying the condition of the ummah, not work together in sin so we can destroy the ummah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-mu'minu lil-mu'mini kal-bunyan yashuddu ba'duhu ba'dan wa shabaka bayna asabi'ahu wal hadithu fi Bukhari. The Prophet ﷺ said, the believer, to the believer is like a construction. It strengthened, the bricks strengthen each other and he, he interlaced or interlocked his fingers. That's how the believers are. You see this? You see any space? If you were to throw a ball right now, would I, would I not be able to, to re, you know, reject it and stop it? Yes, with one hand, I may not be able to. It may yank my hand backwards, it may be too strong, it may break my hand. But when you have this, it becomes stronger. So we are like bricks to one another. We strengthen each other to get to Jannah. Not destroy each other to go to Jahannam. And look how effective it is. In Hadith in Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ said, As-sa'i ala al-armalati wal-miskeen. As-sa'i ala al-armalati wal-miskeen. Kal-mujahidi fi sabili Allahi. Aw al-qa'imi al-layla al-sa'imi al-nahar. Subhanallah al-azim. The one who maintains, who's looking after the widow and the miskeen. Okay? Is that a lot? If your salary, mashallah, tabarakallah, is up there, and you take out just a small portion to look after a widow or a miskeen. Which to you is, is what you spend on, on perhaps something that is totally unimportant. What do you get from Allah? You'll be like the one who's fighting in the cause of Allah. And the one who's praying all night and fasting all day. Can you, get, can you be a better Muslim? Can you imagine a Muslim who fasts every day? And he prays all night, every night, and he's fighting in the cause of Allah. What did he leave? For goodness. Khalas. You just look after a miskeen or an armala, Allah will give you all that. Why? The brotherhood. The brotherhood. Looking after your brother. 
Lastly, or before lastly, obstacles in the way. وَلَا تَجَسَّسُ Spying. Allah says, وَلَا تَجَسَّسُ Don't spy. There's a chat Islam. I don't know if you know this. I have a weekly uh, class on chat Islam. Chatislam.com for Q&A. Because all these emails are too much to handle. So we have an hour usually, 45 minutes to an hour Q&A session. It's audio and video. People come in, ask the question, answer the question live. Of course, I'm conveying what the scholars have said. I'm not issuing my own fatawa. Yet, those same individuals I told you about earlier, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, very keen, very keen on hunting. So they come to the actual uh, episode, not episode, what do you call it now? Like, uh, the show or the session. session or whatever you want to call it. And they, and they ask me trick questions. Huh? Ask me questions that they will catch me spying. And then one time they asked the question, I gave the answer, and then he exposed himself. He said, ah, oh, blah, 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 and then we knew. Then we found out that there are people that come with the objective of listening to the whole Q&A session, not to benefit, but hunting for mistakes. They want to find something to use it against me. And Allah says, let the justice It becomes halal now. You see, everything Allah made haram, it becomes halal for them if you are not with them in the cult. And vice versa. Everything Allah made halal, they make it haram if you're not with them in the cult. Yani, there's no solution. Secondly, envy. وَلَا تَحَاسَدُوا In the hadith we quoted earlier, don't envy one another. People don't want to see you come up. Are you coming up for what? Yani, yani, let's just say you're coming up, let's say you're gaining some popularity, something. So what, are your pockets gonna get full? Or are you gonna be on what? This is da'wah ya shaykh. This is working for Islam and the Muslims. This is service for the deen. We are humble servants of Allah trying to serve, work for Islam as a janitor. Okay, call it whatever you want to call it. The worst kind of employee, you know, job description you can think of. That's what we're trying to do just to serve Islam. What are you upset about? What are you envy? You're not there? Because you're not there, so you want to nail him down instead of being happy. Alhamdulillah, the Muslims are returning. There's an Islamic awakening. Instead of cherishing these things, no, because of what? Envy. As long as we envy one another, there will be no real brotherhood. It's always going to be something else. Thirdly, hatred. And that is very close to envy. After you envy someone, then you hate them. And after you hate them, where's the love? There will be no love. And lastly, arrogance. What is arrogance according to the Prophet ﷺ? Dressing nice? No. Allah is beautiful. He loves beauty. Arrogance is batarul haqti wa ghamtun nas. Rejecting the truth and belittling people. Once the truth is presented and you reject it, you become arrogant. And this is one of the main reasons why the brotherhood in Islam is weak. Because we have unfortunately amongst us many many people that have become arrogant. And they're not willing to submit to the truth. They're not willing to submit to the truth and that creates this that division. Because rejecting the truth and belittling people necessitates lack of brotherhood. So if all the Muslims were to be humble, like the Sahaba were, then we would be in a much better condition. Conclusion. Let's love each other. Is that too much to ask? Can we not say to the Muslims today, love your Muslim brother? Can you not have this attitude in the masjid, at work, at home, wherever you are. Can we not love one another for the sake of Allah? What's the big deal? It's become a difficult task. It has become difficult. Everybody's, everybody hates everybody. People are upset in the masjid. People are upset with each other. Anything someone does, big deal. At work, big deal. At home, big deal. We make big deal out of nothing. Where's the love, Yashir? Where's the love? Where's the love? We need to love each other. Everybody looks and don't love him for citizenship, skin color, nationality. Indian people love Indian people. Wallah brother, we're all Indian. Barakallah. You Arabs, crazy bunch of lunatics, we don't want to deal with you. We're all in it together. Arabs and non-Arabs. There's no you know, Filipino love, Indian love, Arab love. But that exists today. It exists. Which is a really a form of jahiliyyah. That's what it boils down to. Let's put, you know, these barriers of racism and nationality and all this stuff, just throw this in the ocean. And let's love your brother because he's your brother, whether he is the one who makes your tea at work, or the one who sells you sandwiches, or the one who cleans your car, it's all brothers. 
The one who cleans your car, if you have a haris, he deserves, salam alaikum, shake your hand, shake his hand, don't be disgusted. Even if you're disgusted from, from things, he's your brother, shake his hand. Kif halak, how are you? Barakallah feek, may Allah bless you. Wallah, you do me a favor, ya Sheikh. How can I pay you back? He's getting money for cleaning the car. Yani, you would think that this is a business transaction. So what? So now you treat him like he's a, 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 an enemy of yours? Do this and do that and you're just giving commands because you own the car and he's the one washing the car. Wallahi, in the sight of Allah, he's worth maybe 50 like you. In the sight of Allah with his salah and with his condition and the money he makes to send to his family, in the sight of Allah, he could be equivalent to 500 of you. You're thinking you missed a cool guy. Chill out, man. Treat him as a brother, end of story. Don't look at his Bengali, wallah, ghair Bengali, wallah, Hindi, wallah, ma Hindi. Kalam fadi hadha. This is all jahil, jahil. I don't know where the people bring this from and they're all happy with it. But we have to, we as Muslims have to get over these things. And we have to implement it in our lives. Treat everybody the way he deserves to be treated. Otherwise, we will fall into these two ayat which I will conclude the lecture with. بإذن الله عز وجل إن الذين فرقوا دينهم وكانوا شيعا لست منهم في شيء Very those who have divided their religion and they became many sects, you, O Messenger of Allah, have nothing to do with them. Yes. Those who become sects, come, 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 join us and ignore everybody else. You ha the Prophet ﷺ has nothing to do with these kinds of people, with this kind of mentality. Any sect is not part of Islam in this fashion. And the next ayah, وَلَا تَكُونُوا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ فَرَّقُوا دِينَهُمْ وَكَانُوا شِيعًا كُلُّ حِزْبٍ بِمَا لَدَيْهِمْ فَرِحُونَ uh, Surah number 30, ayah 31 and 32. The one before Surah number 6, ayah 159. And do not be like the who? The mushrikeen, ya shaykh. The polytheists. The garbage of this world. The garbage of this world. The mushrikeen. Don't be like them. What was their quality? Those who have divided their religion and became many sects. Everyone is happy with what they have. Every sect is content with what they have. Catholic Christians and Protestantism and Jehovah Witnesses and now everybody says, no, we are the stuff, we are the right and everybody else is no bueno. Everybody else is no good. Same mentality, don't be like those mushrikeen. So we have to be a single brotherhood. Upon the truth, this, this ultimate brotherhood which, which brought the Sahaba together, we have to go back to the first three qualities, the factors that they had. So I call on every Muslim here and over there, Ya yeah, akhi, learn the right aqidah, barakallah feek. Come back to the aqidah of Al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Save yourself a headache in this life on, on Yawm Al-Qiyam. Secondly, adhere to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and leave alone these innovations, which is the third thing. Leave them alone. Just leave them alone and the callers to them and the innovators. And fourthly, establish a brotherhood with the Muslims. If all of us establish these four qualities, the Muslims will be in charge of this world once again. And it's not difficult for Allah. In fact, Allah has promised us. وَلَقَدْ سَبَقَتْ كَلِمَتُنَا لِعِبَادِنَا الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِنَّهُمْ لَهُمُ الْمَنْصُورُونَ وَإِنَّ جُنْدَنَا لَهُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ And our word, our promise has already reached the messengers. It has already come forth, come forth to the messengers that they are the ones who will be victorious. And that our soldiers will be the one who will defeat. So we just have to live up to these qualifications. So we may attain this promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah azza wa to enable us to act upon these reminders and to be brothers in faith for his sake and to admit us to paradise. Verily he is able to do all things. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Any questions? Any questions? Yes, sir. Waalaikum salam. Is the brotherhood apply to uh, a believer with his non believing friends? Believer and non believing friends? Yeah. No, Habibi. The brotherhood is with the Inna Mal Mu'minun. They are also Muslims, but they are lost. Yeah, they get that general brotherhood. There's enough love because of Iman, but not the one which develops. Which reminds me before we end. I don't know if this should be on. Wait. Okay, I guess not. So we'll see you next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.